Welcome back, Legends. I hope you're all amazing. It is time for another installment of Friday Q&A. As always, thank you so much to everybody who submitted a question for this week's Q&A. If you've got a question you would like me to answer, put it in the comment section below. Feel free to ask me anything you consider reasonable. And yes, I am sipping on a cup of coffee, so the answers here will probably be very accelerated in their response towards the end of the video. But I will say before we get started, if you would like to support my channel, there is a link to my Patreon in the video description. It lets me buy things like the new lights and the brand new lens that I'm filming with so that I can keep improving the content on this channel. Alternatively, there is a link to the Ragdoll Bandcamp store if you want to buy some of our merch or some of our music directly and help us keep making loud noises. Let's go with this week's questions. What sort of output do I like on my pickups? Am I a low output, a medium output, or a high output pickup person? I think I firmly straddle the fence on this one, and I would say most of the guitars that I gig regularly have medium output pickups, so you can see a bunch of them behind me. My PRS Custom 24 has a JB and a Jazz set in it by Seymour Duncan. My main PRS SC245 has the stock SC245 pickups, which are just kind of moderate output pickups. They're not crazy hot or anything like that. The Makati that I've got that I often gig with as well has Fishman Fluence classics in them, which are the less over the top fluences by Fishman in there. So I think I like the medium output stuff in general. I do have a few guitars with insanely high output pickups and they're good for some things, but I find that you do just lose that ability to clean things up down track. Nowadays, there are so many ways to generate distortion and boost your amp, whether using a real amp or a digital solution like I do. So I find that a moderate output pickup is going to give you the best of both worlds. You get a good signal to noise ratio, but you still have control over the overall EQ curve. And, you know, it's just a little less over the top, but I am for things that are over the top. So I like to do it mostly in the Axe FX these days. Have I ever played a Marshall Silver Jubilee? Would you believe I have not? The closest I've ever gotten is playing one of the Marshall Slash signature amps. A buddy of mine has one that sounds phenomenal. So if there are anything like that, I would probably really like the Jubilee. The Jubilee and the JVM are two Marshalls that I have not featured on the channel just yet. And I really want to get both of them at some point in here and do an in-depth video and make some loud guitar noises. So if you're in Perth and you own either of those amps and you're willing to loan it to me for a day or two, please get in touch and you know, I'll make you a cup of coffee and we can hang out and make some loud guitar noises. Is the Seymour Duncan JB and 59 the ultimate 80s pickup combination? I might be inclined to say the JB and the Jazz is the ultimate 80s pickup combo. I mentioned earlier, I've got it in my green PRS Custom 24. I think the Jazz is probably my favorite neck humbucker of all time. I also have a Jazz in my Hamer Standard, which is right about there. And the neck pickup on that guitar sounds absolutely epic, clean or dirty. So I would go for the Jazz. I think the Jazz sounds really good split as well, which is kind of essential for those chimey 80s style clean tones. But as always, I'm interested to hear from all of you watching the video, what's your go-to pickup combination if you just wanted to get your 80s rock on? What would I suggest for a small keyboard for a home studio setup? If you want a hardware keyboard that makes noises in the keyboard, you know, there's a lot of options there that I'm just totally not qualified to talk about because I haven't tried any of them. I would say for a small home studio setup, get some free software synthesizers and get a small MIDI controller. I use this one. This is the Arturia Keystep. It's like 200 Australian dollars. I got it because it actually has hardware MIDI ports on there as well as CV outputs. You can attach a sustain pedal. You can sync stuff up. Uh, it's got some little twisty things on it as well. And it's got a sequencer in there. It's a whole lot of MIDI controller for your money. And I kind of like these little keys. They're really nice to play and I actually use this quite a lot when I am programming soft synthesizers or playing, you know, finger drums, which is something I'm just not very good at. Like finger drums and finger skateboards were never my strong suit. 
but it doesn't mean that I haven't had fun trying to do it. So in last week's video, I got a lot of questions about studio monitors and I'm gonna roll them all into one mega question. I am using Atom A7X studio monitors in this room. I really like the Atom stuff. I believe there was a question like between the barefoot stuff and the Atom stuff. I haven't tried the barefoot stuff, so I'm super biased. Uh, don't trust my opinion on this because I use the Atom A7X. I'm really, really used to them. I just find, you know, when it comes to monitors and once you start spending a bunch of money, you do have a law of diminishing returns with how much objectively better something can be. And it almost comes down to what you're used to working with and whatever lets you work the fastest. So I've only ever used the Atom, so I'm used to them. But if you can find a local music store where you can actually play you know, your rig through a bunch of different monitors in a controlled environment, that is the best way to try them without having to spend a bunch of money and then flip stuff and just go down the rabbit hole there. But uh, yeah. I like the atoms a lot of other people do and a lot of other people use totally different solutions which i'm sure they will mention in the comments in terms of treatment in this room i've never measured anything with pink noise or a room correction or anything like that i'm not professionally mixing anything in here i'm just kind of having fun making guitar noises i record all my demos in here i record ragdoll demos in here we've done a bunch of tracking in the past in this particular room and it has been totally fine, just not in a mixing situation. I have some basic bass traps in the corner here. This room is really not ideal to be, you know, set up like a professional studio, but for a mug like me making guitar noises on YouTube, it is more than adequate. And I gotta remind myself what the last question was. Oh, volume levels. I have no idea. I don't have an SPL meter in here. I try not to crank it too much. And I just actually don't have a guitar cab in this room at the moment. So out of the atoms, they can get pretty loud, but I feel like as a guess, I'm probably in the like, you know, not super annoying level, probably 75, 80 dB as somebody mentioned. I'm gonna go for a guess that that's the case a lot of the time. Uh, I also recently got some Red Sound MF10 FR, FR speakers and they crank, they can get really, really loud. So I haven't done any measurement with that in here. Again, it's just the room that I'm used to and I feel like I know how to get good results out of it. So your mileage may vary. And the last question was, if you're dialing in a sound for home use, maybe on studio monitors or, you know, out of a little speaker or something like that, how do I then take that to a gig? On the Fractal anyway, there's a perform page. So I put stuff like the global low cut in a parametric EQ or the high cut in there and the treble control and the presence control and anything that controls the extreme frequencies there. But I've found as a matter of trial and error and speaking to whoever's doing sound, I'll normally go, hey, what did you have to do on the desk to make this work? And a lot of the time they say nothing. I just turned it up and sometimes they'll say, hey, I had to pull out a little bit of 4K or I had to boost the low mids or something like that. Then I will go and make that adjustment on my preset and save it. In general, due to the equal loudness contours and just the weird quirks of human hearing, you're gonna to have to pull out some bass and pull out some high end once you get super duper loud. But a lot of the time, your sound guy can handle that. What would the specs be on a Leon Todd signature guitar? And I'm not allowed to just say a PRS SC245 in black with natural binding. That is probably realistically what it would be. But there are a few things that if I was ever gonna have a signature guitar would be built on top of that basic design. Namely, I would want a single coil sound from the neck pickup. So some kind of tap or maybe like a P90 in there, just something a little bit different. That guitar is permanently in drop C and it might be cool to have maybe a slightly longer scale length, like a 25 inch or maybe a multi scale on there. I kind of like everything else about it. I would go with jumbo stainless steel frets, maybe like around the, uh, you know, 17th fret up some partial scallops or something like that. And that guitar didn't come stock with locking tuners. Uh, Leon Todd Signature would have locking tuners because I rely on locking tuners day to day. Other than that, you know, that guitar just kind of hits a spot for me, especially doing the ragdoll stuff, even though for stuff you might see on the channel, I'll play my Strat a lot or my green custom 24 and for other gigs that aren't ragdoll gigs, I do a bunch of other stuff, but that guitar just really feels like home for me. And I think for me, my kind of signature sound is really built on that. So something along those lines and it would be available in any color you like as long as it's black the Homer.
And one last question before we go. This is my cat, Tibby, and it's very, very easy to confuse Tibby. She's not very happy about being held and being on camera. She's a little bit shy. She's totally deaf. She's about 16 years old. And the previous cat we had, Skanky Boy, this is his daughter. So he was only about a year older than her. They were both strays who just showed up and never left one day. And because she's totally deaf, she absolutely loves my guitar playing. She can't hear any of it. She can sleep through all of it. And uh, she thanks you all for all the Patreon subscriptions because it buys her lots of delicious cat food and biscuits and cream and you know, all those other things that cats probably shouldn't have. But when you're an old cat, you're going to get them anyway. So what do you think about that, Tibby? You want to say goodbye to everybody? Goodbye, everybody. I'll see you next week. Thanks for the questions. Take it easy.